in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Access to light, access to illumination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My faith reaches out to you, and I believe your word for me. Sing it and I believe. I believe. We hand over this teaching session. We pray that you prevail over our minds, prevail over our spirits until there is conformity. Prevail over us until we become that which is expected according to the heart and the desire of the Father. We submit ourselves to your word and we ask that you teach us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It's good to be back home, good to have everybody around. Please greet one another and be seated. Greet one another and please be seated. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. We have a lot to do tonight. We're starting a new series and um, I want us to do the best we can to redeem the time. Amen. I'm excited every time I have the opportunity to come before us and teach because I have learned through experience that one of the ways to bless people is to enlighten them. Hallelujah. You can give people money, you can give people privileges, but one of the ways you bless people is to enlighten them unfortunately we live in a generation that frowns at enlightenment because enlightenment is intangible and we have been trained by our environments to be carnal we always want something we can hold and relate with here and now such as money clothes cars and all of this very very mundane things but the informations that are intangible that empower us usually we do not have the patience to submit uh, i was having a conversation with one of the protocol people while i was on my way coming and i was driving and i looked at him he was sitting at the other side and i was wondering why i was looking at him while i was driving at the same time and i told him i said look my friend you will never succeed in life if you are not mentored and trained. And he looked at me. I said, listen carefully to what I'm about to teach when we come. And I was giving him instances. I have learned and I am more convinced than ever before that training and mentorship 
is how successful people are made. It's not one of the ways. It's the only way. There are no options. Any other person giving you an option is a sign that he doesn't know what he's saying. The mentorship and training is the only way people can become sustainably successful. Truthfully speaking. Mentorship is not listening to a man speak to you. Listen carefully. That's attendance. Mentorship is not opening up your ears to a man's teachings and having the teachings in your, your archives, your laptops, your systems. It may be a pathway, but mentorship starts with a decision that I am willing to submit myself to be taught and I will insist till I understand. Praise God. Mentorship does not start with the availability of information. It starts with a determination from the heart of the one who will be the recipient. It's a manifestation of humility to admit that there are dimensions that we do not yet see and know and have. Regardless of what our achievements are, when we come before God and we come before people he has anointed to teach, to train, to build, it is important that you assume the position of a student immediately and listen carefully and not just take notes, but write it in the tablets of your heart and then obtain grace. That's why we pray after every message. Why we are obtaining grace to walk in the reality of what we have heard. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It's one thing to know, but it's another thing to have the grace to do. Brothers and sisters, listen. I may not boast, it will be arrogant to boast of knowing everything. Nobody knows everything. It will be arrogant to make a boast to claim to have arrived but one thing I can tell you is if you submit yourselves to these teachings wholeheartedly under God you will never fail regardless it's, it's not a prayer it's the resultant effect trust me on this the ideas that we communicate to you in this house are not necessarily my ideas alone they have been age-long ideas that have been used by men and women who changed the course of history. They have been age-long ideas that our fathers have used to do mighty things for God. And now God has granted us the privilege to access these ideas. So I don't want you, whilst you are listening to these things, to have a cynical heart debating whether or not you think is worthy of acceptance. Uh, personally, I've made a commitment to believe and work with them. So whether or not you do not believe it, it does not affect my outcome because you see, success is not corporate. Everybody will have to obey himself into the promised land. I can help you, but I can't force you there. I came tonight with a very strong burden and I was very excited when the Lord put this in my heart. It had been something that I planned to share, but um, I mean, it was, it was so powerful when the Lord put it in my heart. I really want you to succeed. God sees my heart and um, the leaders know how much we are passionately committed about the success of everyone. I believe and I have held this conviction for years and I have taught many, including our students in the school of ministry, that loyalty, loyalty, loyalty is a debt that you must pay when people are loyal to you it's as though you owe them something when people are loyal to your anointing loyal to your words loyal to your grace loyal to the dealings of god upon your life you must reciprocate that loyalty by ensuring that their trust is not disappointed that's why we pray that's why we fast that's why we prepare that's why we research. That's why we study to make sure that every information that you receive is not only spiritual, but life applicable and indomitable. Having a character that can suppress whatever limitations. Hallelujah. So pray one more time and say, Lord, I submit myself afresh. 
Please pray from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success systems, part one. Success Systems Part 1 Success Systems Part 1 The goal of this series is twofold. Number one, to reveal to us the requirements the requirements that must be satisfied for you to experience lasting kingdom success number two to unveil to you the laws the principles the secrets the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from god's standpoint it's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit it's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful it's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our lives so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one and um, I pray that God will help us. Two scriptures very quickly, and then we'll take the course content. Second, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Please, media, you need to work with us very, very fast tonight. Media, help us. Second Peter 1, verse 8. And then we'll look at Genesis 39, verse 2 to 6. It says, For if these things be in you, what things? certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in this context it says in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ but it applies to every area of life if these things abound in you and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 four verses two to six genesis 39 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian we're reading to verse six and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Everybody say trust. And he knew not what, and he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Help us tonight. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Write down the things we are going to be considering in this series. Please write. Those online, follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you. There are a few things that we are going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight, we'll stop and pray. But please, I want to take my time and teach you this. I want you to understand it and I trust that God will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in Jesus' name. The first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure. How real is failure? Is it a mirage or is it real? Number two, we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom. Number two, we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom. What is God's idea of a successful person? The concept of success in the kingdom. Number three, we are going to look at the concept of laws and principles. The concept of laws and principles. Can I continue? Number four, definition of terminologies. There's too much confusion. So we need to clarify terminologies as it regards or as it relates to kingdom success. Definition of terminologies. And then number four, number five, thank you. The laws of success. The laws of success. We are going to be examining the laws. And then number six will end with a very strong impartation. And trust God to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives. Praise the Lord. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Now, statistically speaking. Statistically speaking. Five out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man give him 70 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain a testimony of regrets a testimony of sadness lost opportunities mishandled laws a life of fatal failure most people die in pain most people die advising their children don't be like me most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it pastors business people parents young people the same challenge is eating up our society the correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation as far as kingdom success is concerned so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real 
Second point, failure will happen to you if you allow it. I think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with. We have this inheritance mindset that by default, just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail, there's no such reality in the school of success. Let me tell you, everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself. Is a reality that is upon us by default. <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say I reject it. You better listen quietly to what I'm saying. I am a very spiritual person. I have learned the foolishness, the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect. Please listen carefully. I love you too much to deceive you I love you too much to mislead you. And one of the graces God has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance. So anything you hear that you do not understand, just be patient. By God's grace, I'm a good builder. Every house is built by some man, he says, but God is the builder of all. And so we will not build a house that is lopsided. We'll build a house that stands solid on the rock. No matter what shakes it, it remains there. Say amen failure is real brothers and sisters there are pastors who are failures regardless of their spirituality there are churches that are failing and have failed some of us here seated right now it's an uncomfortable truth but right now if you will admit you know you are failing woefully for many of us are we together now yes disappointed expectations and it's important that we find out God's system to bail ourselves out and do so very, very fast. So failure is real. Failure is very real. We see it every day. You see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets. You see failure in the face of failed marriages. A man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations i should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years, you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity. Failure is real. It lives among us. We see it in the faces of our dear loved ones. We see it in the frustration of our parents. You watch them and you know they are frustrated. Some of them are too arrogant to admit it. So they act as though they are still in control. But many have been forced, painfully so, to admit that there is something they are missing many people have been forced amplified by the recession to swallow their pride and admit i'm not getting something right nobody becomes a success by accident nobody becomes a success by chance by luck Yesterday, I was ministering at a crusade and I gave an instance. I think I've, I've given that instance here. And I want to repeat that example. Watch this. If I make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then I sleep and I march, will gravity forgive me and say, no, I know you were joking. You were not serious. Next time be serious. No. Gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake every time i violate that law of gravity i pay for it and i do so immediately and sometimes i may not have a second chance again this is how success is and this is how failure is listen many well-intentioned people many christians born again and filled with the holy spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status their life should succeed automatically no being a christian gives you the potential and the access for success 
there is a difference between access and delivery access means potentials delivery means experience listen very carefully all that jesus christ did for us on the cross gives us access but there are systems built in the dealings of god with men that converts access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he's taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of god with man there are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things number one he calls it the person of jesus and number two he calls it the principles of jesus number one he calls it the life of god number two he calls it the laws of god everybody say the life of god say the person of jesus say the principles of jesus and my mudok teaches that the person of jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with god but it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now are we together now so i can be born again filled with the holy spirit if i die i'm going to heaven if jesus comes i'm going to heaven i can live a life of peace whether in plenty or lack because his person has consumed me i have conformed to the image of the christ experientially but then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of jesus but the principles of jesus everybody say the principles of jesus that means i can be born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be sick born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be poor born again filled with the holy spirit and yet fail in career born again filled with the holy spirit and become a total failure in life such a possibility exists now most christians have embraced the life of god but we have ignored his principles are we together now and most unbelievers have ignored the life of god but embraced his principles so most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that jesus is not lord over their lives but they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom applying the principles of the kingdom and i've taught you here in koinonia that there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed into his laws so that whoever obeys them will get the result regardless of whether he has a relationship with god or not there is a dimension of the power and the ability of god that is programmed in laws so it doesn't matter who applies them there are certain dimensions that are privy to only believers it is only in christ that those dimensions can be obtained like peace like the joy in the holy ghost are we together now like the life of jesus security of your eternal destiny the ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations all of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced christ but the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you are rising in character you are confirming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real i think it was a wise man i don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently 
and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion write this down the word success let's define it let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom lord give us understanding give us passion to learn please give us isaiah 117 a scripture just came into my spirit and i want you to see it isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 write this word down success what is the definition of success i'm i'm trying to introduce the concept of success because please look up the body of christ has had issues for a very long time there are many denominations and there are many christians some of them looking at me right now many listening to me online every time you mention the word success especially in church and to a christian there is this build up of resentment we have associated success with carnality we have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of christ those who are carnal they don't love god and want to be successful and those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth there's no such doctrine in the bible the bible says looking up to jesus not up to a denomination not up to a pastor it's important to follow us but be sure we are following christ and if at any point you are not following christ it is within your power to switch paul said follow me as i follow christ i have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings that a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation let me tell you something many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know i love the body of christ and i don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism i'm teaching the body and so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks listen carefully many of us have inherited this from our parents many of our, our loved ones so spiritual and well-meaning but this this um mindset especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy keep their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere is an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness endorsed irresponsibility endorsed lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed so change it and use it well one to go again he didn't say be successful he says learn you must be taught he says learn to do well it's not just saying make it uh -uh. 
learn be studious submit yourself under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well when i saw that scripture it was quite instructive learn to succeed joshua selman learn it is not in you by default learn the same way um where is he doctor it's not a doctor by default but you learn to become a doctor you learn to become an architect are we together you learn to become a mother that's why when ladies give birth for the first time their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn and i will succeed say i will learn i will be trained and i will succeed look at this when you want to become a doctor what do you do you pass through the medical school correct when you want to become an engineer what do you do you pass through the engineering school when you want to become an architect what do you do you pass through the system so when you want to become a success what do you do unfortunately there is no official institution for making people successful you see why many people are failures there are many graduates because there are many universities there are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary schools there are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime but there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful learn to do well write this down success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal write it down the word success has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with all of these things success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal any goal that is ideal that is worthwhile when you set goals and achieve them you are said to be successful this is the general definition of success the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal I want to become a doctor and then you pass through the system and you become a doctor with respect to that goal you are successful I want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it and then eventually you get married and have your children with respect to that goal you are successful so without goals there is no basis for being successful are we together now The accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal is what we call success now let me give you a kingdom definition of success I've given you a general definition let's look at a kingdom definition write this down the fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success from God's standpoint the fulfillment of your God-given assignment not just any goal if an arm robber says i must steal and then he steals successfully from an earthly standpoint we say he has succeeded from but from the kingdom standpoint is not a success the fulfillment of your divine assignment the fulfillment of your god-given assignment is called success another definition the effective use this is my own definition now the effective use of your life your gifts and your resources to draw men to Jesus and bless humanity is called success I'll take it again the effective use of your life comma your gifts comma your resources to draw men to jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success so when you use your life like a drink offering when you use your gifts 
and when you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by God's standpoint and by men's standpoint you are a success are we together now the effective use of your life the effective use of your gifts the effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity to advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity that's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of god is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea about success that's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people now the truth is if you are successful it will show around you but the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom that you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars you are wearing shoes you are having estates all around and you are a great man moving around and people bow down to you and people call you all kinds of names and you have multiplied troubles multiplied psychophants that does not make you a success how much you use your life how much you use your gifts how much you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to live a life of impact blessing your world blessing your humanity every other thing cars houses all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success not the proof of success the proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the father the proof you have succeeded is a life transformed not a car in your garage the proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know jesus because you did business well somebody coming to know jesus because you read your book well somebody coming to know jesus because of your marriage somebody coming to love jesus because of your ministry when your life has the capacity to draw men regardless of what area you are functioning to jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures i will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northern man and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southern man and they are victimizing you down north or you are an eastern man and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together 
there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles l-a-w-s and then principles i want us to examine the concept of laws and principles jesus thank you look at me in any other and every other aspect of our lives we believe in laws and principles but when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies we do not believe that they walk by principles it's a tragedy it's a tragedy please hear me brothers and sisters it's a tragedy when you go to school you know that there are laws and principles you are a science-based student they teach you all kinds of science things physics chemistry they teach you how to do a lot of things they teach you what to do they teach you laws different kinds of laws and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful I will tell you where our resentment for loss came from. The imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works. This is where we got our resentment for the word laws. Great men and women of God scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt, and I believe everything that they teach, in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of Christ into the reality of Christ's finished work. Listen carefully. In an attempt to show how that the old is gone, the Old Testament, you know, and that we are products of this New Testament now. In an attempt to help believers live the victorious life, we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said. We have drifted to another side of the pendulum. And so the average believer, especially the average Pentecostal charismatic believer, when you hear the word laws, when you hear the word principles, you just reject it. You don't even need to know law of what. You just say, no, 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 I'm not under the law. Write this down. Laws are systems is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome a law is a system of rules or just a system of operation either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations there are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable outcomes write this down laws are a reflection of god's justice system laws are a reflection of god's justice system the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations it didn't say where it never changed righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne laws are a reflection of god's justice system so that nobody will say god victimized others and did certain things no he leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail write this down laws are the keys to consistency and predictability laws are the keys please pay attention especially those following online wherever you are i want you to please pay attention take notes if you can't follow us on facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we're making posts please follow i have a passion to help you understand this laws are the keys to consistency 
and predictability write this down when your results do not change regardless of obstacles then you are operating by laws when your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years people like kenneth copeland benny Hinn, 40 something years in ministry brothers and sisters that ministry was built by laws it was not just built by emotions many great corporations across the world i don't know what the oldest um retail outfit is in nigeria the oldest restaurant in nigeria but we have very great um restaurants across the nation of the earth right like Colonel sanders and his kentucky fried chicken and a number of people walmart and all of this some of those outfits are hundreds of years old the founders have long been dead but the laws kept it write this down laws make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you write this down finally and then i'll begin to teach correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding not just application correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success everybody look at this mike is playing something do you know that the same way he's playing this if someone in ghana if someone in america plays based on whatever sequence is playing they will get the same result because they are based on laws is that true please help me with this this is nestle water how many of you know there's nestle water in lagos how many of you know there's nestle water in ibadan how many of you know there's nestle water in maiduguri the taste is almost the same if not the same the packaging and everything when you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it you would think they took the one here there there is consistency in results there is sustainability there is predictability there are many workers those who package this in lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone but they are all governed by the same laws so their results are the same correct thank you um pastor femi please come my friend please come two of you please stand here now look how smart they are both looking stand here please now look at this pastor femi has a knotted tie and this gentleman here has a knotted tie now watch this were you in the same room when you were knotting your ties did you meet yourselves did you know you were going to knot ties but you took this rope did something to it and it became this and you see how much it looks like the same thing both of them were miles apart but engaging the same principle and regardless of their location the results were the same are we together now now this tie will not say Lila, i'm not going to not because i'm not in koinonia no if a thief knots this tie to dress smart and go and steal the tie will not say you are a thief in two hours you are about to steal i won't agree no laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born-again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results 
so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this not in ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs so it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know you've heard me say it many times something i do not know is responsible for my limitation in life how true how true the correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success we had a great time over at bidda um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday and i'm sure some of them are following it was such a great time as god always does in the meetings and i had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions man of god what is the secret to your anointing and i in my mind i thought i said if i tell these people now they will not believe it do you see that as i'm speaking to you right now somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of god at the same time you look at a graduate from unn you look at a graduate from abu you look at a graduate from unilag bring all of them together haven't never met themselves but they were submitted to the same laws they will talk as though they know they've known themselves for years correct that means there is something all of us can know that regardless of where you are all of us will call and they'll say are you experiencing the same result you say exactly as said do you believe that honestly if you don't believe this just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night the, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success is, is success important somebody may be asking me be patient and ask me five years from now remain the way you are and keep going I will be glad to answer you five years from now when you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now when you watch the pain when you watch three children stand before you and say daddy we are hungry when you watch your child become an arm robber simply because of failure then you will ask that question again is success important it's a terrible thing please be careful how you listen to people don't criticize men of God. Don't criticize leaders, even business experts. Be careful. Right now we have all kinds of business experts. Anyone just chokes himself with tie, holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere and teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense. And in the end of it, you are so motivated because of the rhetorics and the gimmicks that are used. And then at the end of it, you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster and you get back into square one be careful i desire to succeed with my life i have tasted a bit of it it gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry i know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry i know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of god and not have anybody to bless today by the grace of god we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting i have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and i know they work they will work for you in the name of jesus christ they will work for you in the name of jesus christ one of i think is i think his patients i spot her here she sent me a text very very funny text and um she's a student in the school of ministry and i'd been teaching them a number of things and then she she went to zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the holy spirit according to her she was shaking and wondering whether it will happen and i mean in minutes that person was shaking and blasting in tongues and she called me said my god look at this thing and then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly predictability predictability there are keys nobody is born rich nobody is born blessed 
are we together he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me you're, you can live out like that or you can change I made a decision that I will change it's a decision that I made and I want you tonight if you have not made that decision to make a strong decision I'm taking it gradually with us because I want us to understand this let's define terminologies right we're going to define 14 words that will be playing around within this series 14 words that have been misunderstood I don't want to make the mistake of believing that when I mention a word all of us understand that this is what I'm saying write it down the first word I've already defined it success the accomplishment of a worthy goal am I boring you please write The second word I want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure. What is failure? Write it down. That's the second word. I'll be very, very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray. Jesus, we bless you. Failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective you are said to have failed when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective the inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor and um maybe i may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as on merited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed number three what is favor men investing their time credibility and resources to help you achieve your goals what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down i had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day i was inspired and i wrote it down about grace just pay attention as i list as i read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me 
this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion an exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me i'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from god and only in and through christ now listen i wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the holy spirit okay this is me writing permit me i'm reading as i just wrote directly this morning the holy spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace i have ever heard and known and i'll tell you what the holy spirit told me about grace ready james 1 17 this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 this is the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god 
but only in and through Christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access uh -uh. grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um, were captured in the Judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to Moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves. That's what was abolished. Works is not the same as action. Action is still relevant for results. Do not equate works with actions. The works of the law are different from works. What was abolished was the works of the law. I never will have to slaughter an animal again. I never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach God. Once and, and forever, Christ has offered himself. The veil has been torn. That is true. But to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action, in terms of obedience, in terms of partnership, in terms of participation, is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement 
So works equal obedience to the believer today. Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what I call works. Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works. We need to define this because I'm going to be playing around with these words and um, it's important that all of us when you hear it you know what I'm saying. Number what now? Let's hurry up. I will rush now. Number six, excellence. Let's define excellence very quickly. Number six, excellence. What is excellence? Excellence means the highest level of quality available. Write it down. The highest level of quality available is called excellence. The highest level of quality available is called excellence. Another definition, surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Advantageous connections. Number nine, knowledge. What is knowledge? Thank you, Jesus. What is knowledge? The gathering or acquisition of information. The gathering or acquisition of information or facts. That's called knowledge. The gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness of familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the 10th terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is 
comprehension. Eleven, wisdom. We're almost there. Eleven, wisdom. Correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge. Write it down. Wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. Also refers to the accurate application of knowledge. When knowledge is applied accurately and correctly, it's called wisdom. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm imagining? I'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say, Apostle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, look, you will be too blessed to do it. Even if you don't like me, you will do it. You will turn back. One day I'll come to your house and when others are languishing, I will see you together with your children giving God praise and say today is a day of we are just worshipping and blessing his name and people will say are you in Nigeria you say no I, I am I'm only here but we, 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 we sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order remember I used to say this thing years ago believe it oh believe it I imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying, Mama, I know you did not make it in this life, but I have a surprise. Cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say, Mama, the car you did not drive, this is it. Let the devil do anything he would do. Do you think your mother will be happy? You are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members closed because of rent. I must kill you now. How much is it? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes, he's there. God bless you. Not alone. I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching. And say, This is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12, prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. Number 13. Goals. G-O-A-L-S. Goals. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14, the last word. Value. V-A-L-U-E Value What is the definition of value? Write it down Point of difference What is the definition of value? Point of difference Another definition Your uniqueness Another definition Your skill So what is value? Your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value 
everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God is called value I repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying God is called value take a deep breath you have tried you have been writing some of you that's a key to drive laziness you've not done this in a long time I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain listen I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church your ministry your group excel or fail I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become write this down success is predictable I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful success is predictable now I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed there are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail it's a very sad truth they will be offended and they will think he's pr are you God and then you see that you really fail failure is also predictable write it down so success is predictable semicolon failure is also predictable I can look at your life brothers and sisters and I can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior you are going to be a very great word addict but I know that as far as success is concerned you may not be very successful I can look at your life and I know that you are going to be a very rich man you will buy the jets and the Rolls Royces but you will never be a spiritual man I can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price I can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man I can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels I can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came You know years ago as I began to pursue the things of the spirit I stumbled across materials that taught on this I folded them with speed and threw them one side said, look let me press on this how foolish I was imagine that I came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message I now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, I need I need you have to pay my rent I'm blessing you the Bible says A and B and C. Everybody stand up. Worship team, you are bringing 50,000. Prayer band, you are bringing 1 million. 
Venga. You are not praying for nothing. One million. Leaders, you are bringing two million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you. Yes. It will never happen in this ministry. Where I will say, please, raise offering for me so that I can eat well. No. You know what we call escape velocity in physics? Where you have gone past certain things. It's not pride. It will never happen again till Jesus comes. I found my way to better days. <laughs> I found my way to better days. For many of you tonight, you're on your way to better days. Let them laugh at you. You're on your way. Prophesy to yourself. for one minute and say Lord I am truly changing I'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact, a life of dignity, a life of beauty, a life of peace, a life of glory. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we've had all the peripherals. Please listen, I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it. For some of you, is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat. For some of you, is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success. For some of you, there are men of God probably listening to me. You have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection listen if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things when i look at people who say god forbid over my dead body i will never do this and that i tell them keep quiet you don't know the pressure that failure forces people Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you will do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia. Years ago when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand its success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father I think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded. I, I don't know if it was 
whatever it is but it was a very serious issue and the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief potting bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me she said the boss looked at her own mother and said you are not a, a small girl you know what to do if you want a raise someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man now yeah i know you are we, are, we have we can shout in church ah, i won't do it don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot when somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night he never planned it that's what pressure me. when the girl told me that thing, do you know what happened do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me i said oh god what is this we are here jumping in church saying since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken that is such a lie i've seen many righteous people forsaken though i've seen many of their seed beg for bread we sing it by faith and i believe it but i have seen many righteous people such as our parents such as your brother and your sister you know them they love god they have been dejected and forsaken they forsook loves and good things left them. success is predictable failure is predictable you can make up your mind from today that you're going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success you can make up your mind today that you're going to begin in in a way and a dimension that you have never seen to obey these laws and excel let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight ready the laws of success thank you jesus ready the first law of success the law of relationships write it down the law of relationships ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm everybody say the law of relationships shout it the law of write this down success is highly relationship dependent success is highly relationship dependent your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent number two everything money can buy relationships can buy it write it down everything i don't care what it is anything at all that money can buy relationship can pay for it money can buy a house relationships can buy a house money can help you build a church relationship can help you build a church listen money as you know naira and cobalt dollars pounds yen these things are not the only means of exchange relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things there are many ignorant people who want to be successful but they do not know the law of relationships so they have to look for money to pay for everything you ask them and they tell you i need five million i need ten million whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for there are people 
who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and he entered free are we together now there are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent there are people who have had to pay for everything in life listen if you use money to buy everything in life you are not wise no. it is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life it has nothing to do with being rich that's the mistake our parents made I love our parents don't get me wrong some of you here are parents we love you we honor you with all our hearts most people think you only succeed when you start having salary hundred thousand coming and they now say wow I have hundred thousand then they have a need they ignore relationships and something that would be cheaply paid for they would have to look for money and pay for it I have paid for many things in my life using relationship relationship like a debit card you can use it and withdraw many other things you can use it and pay for many other things relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms I am connected to people listen connectivity is a key to success you must be connected relationships can help you access anointings relationships can help you access endorsements relationships can help you access favor 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 the major ingredient in success is favor but it takes relationships We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC. We have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for you. Yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent unfortunately for many of us all we know is just love relationship husband and wife somebody who likes a lady a lady likes him back that, that's only an aspect of it your relationship with god is a key to your success correct you excel in life on the strength of your relationship with god the healthier your relationship with god the healthier your relationship with the spirit of god the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father and on the strength of his relationship with his father he did not pay for food he did not pay for protection but here's what he said i don't want relationship i rather want money and he ended relationship and got money what happened to the money without relationships your finances will always be finite there is only so much relationship is the secret of continual financial flow relationship is the secret it is relationship that will keep finances i'm not talking about finances necessarily but i'm just using it as a case study relationships people have blessed me today purely based on relationships not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of god just to bless 
do you know that somebody in Zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what I'm saying now somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship during my birthday people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes I I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest the leaders did something touching different people did things but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done that I said God what is this what is this relationships relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you enter there many of us have been trivializing relationships that's why we keep hustling the bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them he does not know the road to the city by the grace of god i understand the ministry of destiny helpers the ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship god has used me as a destiny helper to many god has used many people as destiny helpers to me hallelujah cheap victories that many of us lose cheap victories some of our parents do not know anybody and so you pay for everything and when you want to use money alone to be successful a day will come you will have all the money in your life and you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do are we together there are people you know one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that i've learned from my father my father is a man who was wealthy in relationships i used to think he was just you know you know just someone who just likes people but now that i've grown i have seen the wisdom relationship paid many bills for my father relationships let me tell you something relationship is an investment the same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship all this something for nothing is, is a joke there are many of us we have this self flattery they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text messages as if you will die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day a need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly i say are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy hey, Jimmy is my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default 
you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one old i ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm i'm trusting god for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense and say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one trouser 200 naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing 
you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say I, I prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I i love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god are we together there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me there is no day i say it may god forgive me if i'm lying but it's true there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me you cook by yourself you wash your clothes by yourself you intercede for yourself no relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that 
some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you are looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground when nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age you were not thinking like them that means most likely they'll be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees
what should I want to be blessed? What are you doing? I just need 100,000 to start a business. Who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed? You see that? You have two tiers of rice in your house. It can pay for a growing relationship. You can cook food. Invite five of your friends and say, look, just to honor you guys, I know that I don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and you say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we're about living be that today and a man of god who also came for administration the man of god came for administration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for administration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seat in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter I have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray I will stop here no one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody is pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and, and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony 
of when I wanted to take a trip to the US to go and scrub the toilets of Charles and Francis Hunter. I was not going there as colleagues. I wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks. It pained me when they died and I didn't meet them. Relationships. How do you travel to US to go and scrub toilet? If you can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on Facebook and say it is the Lord's doing? Most people who don't understand this will say, Look at how this person is disgracing himself. Never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships. There are useless relationships that are going nowhere. Cut them this night. I release the grace on you. There are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you. You come around them, you don't love God, you don't think, you don't plan, you don't do nothing. And they say two weeks, you've not leave them all. Love is a command, relationship is not. Choose your friends. It is within your power. If you are not going where I'm going, I love you, but you have to stay. We can greet in church, we can greet around, but you cannot be my destiny friend, not having my convictions. A man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i'd like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight. Lift your hands and thank God. Open your mouth and say, God, thank you. You are revealing to me the keys. 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 Me the keys. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something about faith most of us our understanding about faith is just for reception but faith is also an instrument of defense Ephesians 6 verse 16 therefore holding forth the shield because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself that when another word comes and says Kai can you imagine Pastor Alpha is this thing really working and then the shield of faith, you lift it. And he said, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen. Faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion. It's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction. Based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen, it's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtained a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report? You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. God. Through his spirit. Will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in. There were people in Abuja. My Bible uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests? All the way. Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. It's a woe to them who are at in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me. I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. Every anointing that must land upon my life today, every grace, every spirit, every dimension, tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinoni, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. Be 
overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yes, oh God, I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war unto them who are this in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, Tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every strong bone shall be broken. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me, I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. The power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you but your family are we together and once that happens know that the time has come you pray it and declare that deliverance lift your hands i want to pray now father you brought us here to change lives change testimonies Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means, there are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, shaka patakata, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now. Inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. Shabatakarataya. At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft inside outside is over is over is over is over i come with a word of prophecy i prophesy as i've been commanded miracles deliverances for families enough is enough oh god bring them there are so many people outside so many people outside all the overflows i see miracles it's like fire it's like fire hallelujah keep your hands down i'm seeing fire and it's going to come upon the heads of people and the lord is saying it is still the deliverance lord where are they where are they where are they right now all over the congregation i prophesy it like fire i see like an eruption a volcanic eruption coming on the heads of people the heads of people shake it at her where you are the fire will meet you there where you are where you are The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Hey, Ramasana, Ramasana, Shigarabala, Ramas. 
be exposed the spirit eating of finances eating of joy eating of peace Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars, catch fire. Altars, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now I pray, the spirit of failure upon people, I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, three, go, go, go. Failure, 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 causing failure in lives, failure in destinies, failure in ministries, failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure, fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains. And the Lord is saying, let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot? Inside and outside. At the count of three, I'd like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Parato Soto Peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now, now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now, now, now. That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking. 
delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before. And the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord, I pray. My God, I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now. Right now, right now, release your destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft, every manipulation. I curse it now. I curse it now. I curse it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now, in Jesus' name, at the count of three, fire from the throne. Fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sisters lift your hands. I want to pray. A very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer. To get one woman. To ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ay, ay, ay. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates. 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 Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Papa. 
empire. Gates be broken. Gates be broken. Gates be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny to fail. A programming to be barren. Who is this God that can look into time? Wherever they are, at the count of three, may the power of God fish them out. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. I open your destiny. Every lady, every sister, you are a gate. You are a gate in the realm of the spirit. Mighty deliverance. Mighty breakthrough. Mighty breakthrough. Mighty breakthrough. It's over. It's over. It's over. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Over. 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance. That will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys. That have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. That fire. Help them, please. Help them. My goodness. Brothers are coming under this unction. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Help them. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Hallelujah. God does this all the time. And I don't know why God is doing this again. <laughs> ah. If he did it before, he can do it again. Say. Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive, come on. You shouldn't be doing that. Lord, wherever they are, 
it will come like fire on you you will be surprised to see what will happen to you now the spirit of god goes to the east the spirit of god goes to the east and is bringing deliverance deliverance strange deliverance evil people strange deliverance by the power of the holy ghost is visiting your soil visiting your foundation visiting your soil if it did it before it could do it again same God back then same God right now if it did it before Abia, 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 Abia said, Shaka Tabarata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you. Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil upon your soil southern kaduna southern kaduna that's what i see southern kaduna connected to southern kaduna there is a miracle happening altars in southern kaduna i come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle leave god's people now of the spirit I found it working in my life is powerful God just calls a territory and everyone is like a digital spiritual system it's not something you just do by guesswork it's the spirit of God the spirit of God the spirit of God God is still touching Kaduna people I'm still hearing it in my spirit God is still touching Kaduna people there's no escape any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Please lift your hands while you pray. I want to pray for students now. Something miraculous will happen here now. I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances. I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all seeing eye, and there is an unction He can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you, you will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move it will affect you. As the power of God touches you. Your result is being worked upon by the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Results, results, carry over us, receiving the mercy of God, receiving the mercy of God, God upgrading CGPS, upgrading CGPS, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, CGPS, by the power of the Holy Ghost, supernaturally, by the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. I bring it under fire. I bring it under fire. Shake a ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people inside outside there are up to five people online supernatural jobs may the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now right now right now right now receive it receive those letters in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit, in the spirit. for you for your loved ones i don't care what they read I don't care what they have. We give them jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now, an anointing will come upon you to signify what he's doing to them. Lord, go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion, whoever is sitting on their promotion, the judgment of God.
Alléluia. Alléluia. We're going to pray for the sick. But um, there are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women particularly. One of them, the anointing of please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. That devil, let her go. Don't disturb us, don't waste our time. Out! Out now! Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. You are living, release her family. Release our destiny right now. The noise maker, out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women. I don't know if there are here, the two of them here. There's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is. But there's one. Please, do we have such people? We have to be fast. If I mention your case, once we give you one minute, there's no response. We have to move so that God can help us, please. Except if they are outside there, then that's all right. The married women that need the fruit of the womb, we have to pray for them right now. Praise the Lord. How many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies? Let me see your hands. I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is, who is stand up? Come on down. The power of God will come upon that person. Please make sure they are married, though. Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If, if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back you only waste money but there is a God madam please look at me I want to pray for you are you here with your husband you and you decided to where is your husband okay. okay look at me madam do you believe God can give you a child I believe that's why I came it's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I receive this God, ba. Let me tell you that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. 
you have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm saying. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. Want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand to Watch what happens to you. There is a name, oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers. Kabataya. What God has joined together, I'm prophesying. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are putting in her stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one? Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. Brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. I will cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My, my destiny, destiny today. Come and change my destiny. My destiny today. Destiny changer, you are a destiny changer. Come and change my destiny, my destiny today. Hold on. Please don't just come out at will. What's hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Yes. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in other embouchi. Kigia Mata. That is how we imbue. Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming with scourges. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. 
Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on. Not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen. Just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out. It's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married. And then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21. And this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, every thing that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You, Ejimi, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation. For this miracle, for this miracle, for this miracle. Daddy, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come, let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Yes, sir. She has put to bed feet time. But none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit. As soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child. Sometimes most of the children will grow nine months. You give birth. Then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Ladi, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is, I want to pray for you. Mama. Good evening, ma. Please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Victor, Victor, Victor. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job, the one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Mama, this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for so that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but. Let it stop, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. 
Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama, we are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, he want to marry. He want Planning to... for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's alright. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. True. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because, Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't watch for long. Yes, sir. You bend down to watch and your back is pain. Exactly. You. Thank you, Father. In the I name of that. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help Mama Thank you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank Please, you, don't. who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trouser is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Who should help him now? <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? I'm the proprietor of his school. I'm a pastor. I'm a civil engineer by training. You own a school? I do, sir. Primary school? Nursery and primary. Nursery and primary? Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously, sir. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. And they are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Time is the Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. The lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. Yes. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, few months, they want to leave. Yes. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir supernatural speed in the name of Jesus Christ grace and speed for you mama God bless you please with this please if we have not called your case just be patient we are going to pray for the sick now why is mama here mommy please come huh your son's name is Nonso what's your name Nonso from where when I'm from state you are a student here no dark who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son or so. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that He's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you. You see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking how, sir. It's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you. That He's going to bring restoration to your life. Supernatural restoration right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. Honestly, I'm not getting any prophetic word for you. But in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get it something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in prison. Have you started serving? 
Yes. In the place where the state works. Let's pray for you. Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. From where? Saria. I said, Sam, Father John. But since you have come out, let me pray for you. Yeah? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God. John. John, look at me. Please. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? It's when I make altar call, John. Run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you. But that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I help, sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turan Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. About me on 66. 66, 1966. How old is that? This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. Madam, this thing started happening to you since soon you were about 17 years. Abune Afara Miki. Yes. About 17 years this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. Please, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many, there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. Please say it like you are serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare that every closed gate standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing swing open now lift your voice and begin to pray please we are not just whiling away time pray participate in the prayer some of us that's what is that's what is affecting our lives every gate every gate every gate every gate every gate Finances over every area of my life be open now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Prayer point number two I will see prophesied upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 
I like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption.
rise up on your feet please everybody inside outside don't be tired you're working out your salvation with fear and trembling before we pray on the request I'd like you to pray and say in the name of Jesus how about now let's be serious in the name of Jesus September October November December, December, hear my voice. Hear my voice. I, speak I speak to you. Deliver to my life, to my life. Only, blessings. only blessings. No pain. No, pain. no, sorrow. no sorrow. No regrets. No regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare a covering over me and my family members, wherever they are, the seal of the blood exempts them from tragedy. Listen, I shared some months ago, hold on, I shared some months ago. A vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Has thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your prayers be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray.
Hallelujah. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children, some for breakthroughs, some for study um, scholarships, others for help, others for reconciliation, others for souls, others for financial prosperity and breakthrough, others for restoration, some for deliverance, others for healing. Lord, I pray in the name that is above all names. We have a covenant of answered prayers with you. Therefore, Lord, arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. Turn every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen. Most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. 
no more in the name of Jesus no more by the power of the Holy Ghost listen someone is speaking here like Mary and saying how shall these things be Lord I, is it true that you will turn my life I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray a turn around that will surprise you receive it in the name of Jesus a dramatic turn around a dramatic turn around hallelujah 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 in the last one month of my life God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God but there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear him not just believe him I prophesy to someone here in the name that is above all names that flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for everyone in business here and it's no diving things are not happening you turn everywhere you've done everything you know to do you need the prophetic I add that prophetic dimension to your business I add that prophetic dimension to your business every dream that is still on paper no finances no grace to bring it out of paper you have been writing things for donkey years but the grace to put it at work I declare between now and next next month miracle service bring evidence bring evidence bring evidence bring results bring results in the name of Jesus anyone called jobless in this place that you have done everything to do including giving money to people and they have not brought jobs to you I don't know how God will do it but this mountain mover that can shake every mountain I pray may he give you not just a job a miracle job miracle job hallelujah every family here that is stuck in one place you try to rise something brings you down you try to rise something brings you down now I prophesy to you the grace for rising receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for rising receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for rising receive it in the name of Jesus every embargo of bad luck upon your life it works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind I declare in the name of Jesus in a way you have never seen favor and help may you experience that throughout the month of September hallelujah a dimension of anointing a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus and I pray for you everything that needs to be broken in your life habits and encumbrances that tie you down I command that today is their burial today is their burial today is their burial hallelujah I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify I curse that spirit right now 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 hallelujah stretch your hands towards me I want to speak to you everything that makes money run away from your hands Money has a spirit. 
you have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You would try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you this month. As we round up this month into the next month. Keys that your hands have never held spiritually. Hold them right now in Jesus name. Keys, mysteries that you have not known. Or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle. May God give it to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, this is a prayer that I pray for people with all my heart. He said, you shall anoint, listen, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons. Right? And then he said, you shall take some of your honor and put upon him. How do you take honor and put upon him? Honor. The spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity. Not by working it. Honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent. Hallelujah. I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place. Uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know, and they were jumping and they looked, they said, ah, we, you have been blessed by your teachings, you know. God has lifted us. You can imagine the things that have happened. And they say, which laptop are you buying and all of that? And I looked at them. I had to just run away and go out. Because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business. They carry something that is so costly and cheap. Let me tell you, honor is more than money. Oh. Don't be deceived. Money is very finite. Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you, the true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know, the devil knows and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble, you pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. 
or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension, receive that mantle of honor. 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 Keep standing, everybody. I want to make an altar call now. Please, no moving around. Let's honor what God is doing. No sitting down. Just five minutes and we're done. Thank you so much for your patience. We stretched the time quite. Um, but I think that it's worth it. If you pay that much price and you come back with tearsome testimonies, it's a wise baguette. There are still people under the anointing. God is still doing things. And even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Alana Bakasuchi Ata Alana Bakasuchi Ata Keep coming Alana Bakasuchi Ata Keep coming quickly please hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god they run away from god so that you are here in his presence some of you are dedicating your life some of you are doing so for the first time it doesn't matter what category i want you to lift your right hand please if you are still coming join them very quickly lift your right hand and say after me very clearly you are not reciting a poem say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you died for me to prove your love for me and now i give my heart to you to prove my love for you I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm above sin. I'm above Satan. I'm above the flesh. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare that I have the life of God. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I am victorious. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted, please. Father, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your wisdom. Let today be the beginning of, of great days in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again. Open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people. In the name of Jesus use them for your glory give them tearful testimonies in the name of jesus i pray amen thank you so much for making this decision now i'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands they will have your details in a minute and then you'll be back to your seat god bless you honor them koinonia hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 